Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, I'm going to talk about scrolling animation libraries, what are the options uh, for you and which one to choose for your next project. I've set up this simple demo where we see all these uh, hand-picked uh, libraries in action. And we're going to go through them one by one, uh, talk about the syntax and where when they are actually handy to use. The first animation on this demo page is created using wow.js and it lets you add a class to your HTML element and then set some easings from animate CSS and uh, then also some advanced uh, things like offset, delay, iteration or duration as well. So wow.js uh, as you can see the demo site also animates elements as they come into the view. Different CSS uh, properties are animated and all these animations are done using animate CSS. So you can pick any of these easings, any of these uh, animations and use them as the element comes into a view. It's quite easy to implement so this is probably handy for beginners or some least uh, JavaScript experienced developers. So you can pick any of the animate CSS uh, easings and just replace these bounds in up with your custom. So if I would use this flip out X, it would do this exactly the same animation when the text comes into a view. Okay, very simple to implement, but can be effective if it's not overused on the on a page. The second example, also not requiring much JavaScript knowledge, it's used scroll reveal JS. As you can see, the syntax is a little bit different. We're setting a data attribute, so data scroll reveal, and then enter left move 150 pixels after 0 0.9 seconds. As you can see, this is quite easy to read, quite easy to set. So enter left means it's gonna enter from the left side of the screen, move 150. So start somewhere here, moves 150 pixels. And after 0 0.9 is actually the delay of the animation itself. So very simple. If you speak English, you'll have no problem setting this up. And uh, there are other words you can use like from and then with wait or after. So you can combine this to get your desired effect very simply by including the data scroll attributes and also there's no other settings, no other JavaScript knowledge you need to know. So it gives you a little bit more power than the wow.js, but the principle is the same. Once the element comes into the viewport, it then starts animating by one uh, of your preset animations. This is a demo side of the scroll reveal. So as you see, when you scroll down, things animating into a place. Also, when you scroll back up, you'll see the animating as well. So this is uh, another advanced feature from the wow.js that you can scroll also backwards and still have the revealing animation as you scroll up, which is quite handy as well. Both scroll reveal and wow.js using CSS animations, which are quite simple can look very nice, but there is one drawback. Uh, you can't actually animate as you scroll, so the animations are triggered, but they are not actually happening while you're scrolling down the page. So that's where scroller comes very handy. So when you scroll down here, you'll see how the animation is happening as you scroll. So if you stop, the animation stops, but wow JS and reveal, scroll reveal, just makes the animation happen. So if I refresh the page, you'll see that the animation just happens and then stays as it is. Once the, once the element actually comes into view, the animation is triggered, but it's not really controlled by the scrolling anymore. Okay, so that's where scroller.js comes very handy. As you scroll down the page, things can animate any of the CSS properties, any property with a number. So you can scale, skew, rotate. You can use any CSS property which has a number, number values. 
Okay, so here again, width, height, padding, font size, Z index, whatever has a number can be animated using scroller.js. You can also use some easings. And to implement scroller.js, it's also quite simple. Everything happens in the markup itself, so you don't really know, you don't really need to know much of the JavaScript syntax and how to target elements using JavaScript or jQuery. Everything happens by setting the right data attributes. So let's have a look at our demo, demo example of the scroller data attribute. So you see the scroller me text actually animating from the right to the original position, which is defined in the CSS style sheet. And we're setting these two data attributes. We're animating opacity from zero to one and also translate X 200 pixels. So the text starts 200 pixels right from the original position and animates back into a view. As you can see, it stops while we stop scrolling. So that's the difference between using scroller and wow.js or scroller reveal. The data bottom top and data center bottom are the, which is called data attributes for scroller and uh, what it actually means when the top of the scroller me text is at the bottom of the viewport. This is the CSS applied to that element. And then when the bottom of it is in the center of the viewport, then we animating it into these uh, CSS values. So this data top bottom uh, data attributes can be a little bit confusing. So I'm talking ab about it in more detail in the parallax scrolling masterclass, which you can uh, get from my website. and. If you're interested to learn more about scroller and how it works and how you can implement it to your scrolling animations, definitely check it out. The next two libraries we're gonna talk about are using GreenSock as a base. So they are for more advanced uh, JavaScript or front-end developers. They require some understanding of how to target elements on the page using jQuery and also some knowledge of the GreenSock green so syntax. So first one is a scrollorama, scrollorama from John Polacek. As you can see when you scroll down, it also stops when you stop scrolling. So similar to scroller. But as I said, because it's it's powered by GreenSock, you have much more control over nesting timelines. You can reverse, you can, uh, de you can delay, you can place in slow motion. There is much more power in uh, using GreenSock for your animations than uh, Scroller.js or the CSS animations. So Super Scrollorama, you've got a very impressive uh, landing page as well, where it shows the power of the GreenSock. Essentially, he, anything you can think of as animation can happen on a scroll animation. So you've got really, really powerful engine if you're using Scrollorama. Or if you use Scroll Magic, which is a new version of Scrollorama, rewritten, so the browser support, mobile optimization, performance optimization is much better with uh, Scroll Magic. Also, it's powered by GreenSock. Okay, so if we look at the syntax in our demo for the scroll magic example, you see it's quite similar to scroll, scroll super scrollorama. You've got a twinning, then you've got twin max, and uh, you're animating from. So you define which element, how long to animate, and the opacity and scale are the CSS properties which we're animating. If you look at the super scrollorama example, you've got twin as well. This is when you want that uh, element to start animating. This is a new timeline and we're setting from, that's the element we want to animate and also the CSS we're setting for the title and the span, which is just this super scrollorama text has also the rotation on it and scale as well. So you got very, very powerful library in Super Scrollorama or Scroll Magic. 
So yeah, this is my five handpicked JavaScript libraries when it comes to scrolling and uh, scrolling animations, parallax scrolling animations. As I said, you can check out more and learn more about Scroller, in particular in a Parallax Scrolling Masterclass. So uh, you can go and check it out on my blog. Hope you like this uh, summary. You can go to my blog to that article and see the demo, explore it in the browser as well, and uh, get more details about the scrolling animation libraries and which one is the best one for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.